We're pleased to say that despite all the doom and gloom that you may be reading in the newspapers and seeing on the TV, here at the Graduate Recruitment Company, the graduate market is certainly buoyant. Whilst there are fantastic opportunities out there, the bar is high and it's really competitive for, for when you're going for interviews for jobs. Um, you'll have to undertake telephone interviews, verbal reasoning, maths tests, assessment centres, and a lot of it takes a lot of time and a lot of preparation. It's key that you should research about the company, the employers, um, and it's understandable that you may think that uh, searching for a job is like a full-time job in itself. Um, so you have, you've, you've worked really hard, you've now received your perfect job offer, um, and you've undertaken a lot of celebrations, and now you've received that. Now this is where the real work starts. It's in the first couple of weeks that your new colleagues, your new team managers and managers within the business are going to form their first opinions of you. They're not looking for you to be perfect, they understand that you've not worked within the industry before, but what they are looking for is a keenness, a willingness to learn um, and somebody that's going to be a good culture fit. It's great to show how keen you are from the off-start, so before your first day, ask your employer if there are any books, websites or trade press you can use to brush up on. This will show your new employer that you're really willing to work hard, you're willing to th throw yourself into the role and go the extra mile to succeed. It will make the new start in your role much more successful, as you'll have a better market understanding, be more comfortable with industry terminologies and all round be much more comfortable on your first week. If you're not already signed up to LinkedIn, then make sure you do it before starting your new role. Throughout the interview process, you would have met a few senior people within the company, so why not send them a request with a note saying hi and that you're looking forward to starting with them, as well as some of the people that will be working on your team. That way, it will be less daunting on your first day at work. If, like me, you're a bit of a shopaholic, then getting your new job, especially if it's your dream job, is an excellent excuse to hit the shops and go and treat yourself. During the interview process, you would have had a good idea about the um, company culture and environment that you're joining, but it's really important that you do ask more questions about the dress code and the policies of the company you're going to. You'll find a lot of the information in your contract and also in the company handbook, but do ask your new manager about the do's and don'ts of the business, or ask us, your consultant, who will know their clients really, really well. Whilst it can be really tempting to go and splash the cash straight away, treating yourself to a whole new wardrobe, our advice would be to settle for some staples to start with. So that you look and feel great on your first day, but it gives you the opportunity to really get to see what everyone in the office is wearing, and then a week or so down the line, go and buy a whole new wardrobe to adjust and fit in. The number one rule of dressing to impress on your first day is being comfortable. Whilst that amazing pair of killer heels make your legs look great, Four hours down the line, if you're unable to walk in them, you're hobbling around the office, that isn't going to make the best impression to the teammates and you yourself aren't going to feel comfortable. So be sensible, be comfortable, and then you're just going to really impress on your first day. You will be overwhelmed when you start a new job, even if you've worked in the industry before. So, there's going to be lots of training, there's going to be information on corporate processes, corporate inductions, and most importantly, lots of names to learn. So it's important that you write all of this information down, because are you going to remember it the next day, the next week, the next month? Possibly not. And the worst thing you can do when you start out in a new job is to re-ask a question that you already know the information for. So, what I would suggest, take lots of notes, because it has the benefit of one, giving you something to refer back to, and most importantly, it looks it makes you look super sharp, super keen and super switched on for your new job. Good luck. Your official contract will probably give you working hours of something like 9 to 5, but that shouldn't mean that you arrive at 8.59 on the dot and leave at 5 o'clock sharp. I'm not saying that you need to be the last person in the office every day, but you need to show the client how much you want the job and show them that you're willing to go the extra mile. It's all about first impressions, and remember you have a three month probation period to really show them that you want to be there and you want to do the job.
Whilst we're on the subject, I think it's really important to touch on timekeeping. It's absolutely important. Don't be late. It's a cardinal sin when you first start a new job. Maybe there have been delays. Maybe you did lose one of your shoes. But there are no excuses in this situation because you should always be planning ahead. You can use great websites like www.tfl.gov.uk which tell you how to get from A to B and how long that's going to take you if there are any engineering works or if you should expect delays. That way you're going to leave yourself plenty of time if you check websites like that. Always leave plenty of time, make sure you leave early to allow for any delays. That way when you get into work you're not going to be making excuses, you're going to be bang on time and have a great start to your day. It's often hard to project yourself when you're starting with a new company, um, but the best thing about doing it is that you can effectively be whoever you want to be. Um, make sure you don't try too hard to be someone you're not though, because that will very quickly become apparent to your new colleagues. Um, but it can be very daunting on your first day, but make sure you make an impression and, and introduce yourself to people in the kitchen and getting to know your colleagues' personalities, and that will make you feel like you settled in a lot quicker. Even if you feel like you know everything when you start your new job, chances are you don't. Um, or even in the rare occasions, if you do, I'd recommend you keep quiet. Um, your new colleagues will want to be um, teaching you things and imparting their wisdom to you. So the best thing you can do is look enthusiastic, show that you're learning and show that you're listening. Um, listen 80% of the time, talk 20% of the time, and that will set you in really good stead because people want to make sure that they're teaching and investing in you um, for your future. There will be a variety of long-standing relationships, friendships, hierarchy and potentially even rivalry within the business that you'll be joining. But it's important not to take sides. Stay away from gossip and try to be as friendly with everybody as possible when you first arrive. If relevant, make a tea round. Here, if someone makes us a cup of tea in the morning with our morning caffeine fix, it goes down a real treat. Obviously, this isn't an exhaustive list and companies will hold meetings with you when you first start to let you know what to expect. What I would say is stick to these rules, have a real passion for what you're doing, be friendly and you'll really enjoy your first few days, months and potentially even years within the business.